Would you stand and sing with us? Sing eyes wide, I'm set on you. Cause you made a road in the wild. I'm standing on ancient true. I'm pressing on with my back to the past. And oh, let the young see visions of the future. And I sing, oh, let the old dream dream. Ready to sing, sing heart sing. Heart sing and stride with you. Lord, I'm bursting like heaven in motion. Cause Jesus, you made me new. I'm pressing on with my back to the past. And oh, let the young see visions of the future. And I sing, oh, let the old dream dreams again sing in my world God do a new thing I know you're moving in my world a chain reaction a holy passion gathered in his presence today we celebrate the love that never fails and will never run out on us amen sing higher than the mountains that I face stronger than the power of the grave it's constant in the trial and the change this one thing it remains come on sing your love your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love on and on we sing on and on and on and on it goes for it overwhelms and satisfies my soul and I never ever have to be afraid this one
Sing that chorus together one more time. Oh, your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Oh, oh, oh. so we thank you, Lord. Oh, that you are with me now. Oh, you won't forsake me, no. And never give up on me. Isn't that right? Then you'll never give up on me. our Savior. Sing, I believe. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. judge. He's our judge and our defender. 
suffered and crucified, forgiveness is in you. You descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light, forever seated high. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the saints communion and in your holy church i believe in the resurrection when jesus comes Amen, amen. Woo. Hey, God is good, all right? I'm already excited. Here's what I'm asking you. I'm asking you just to take a seat real fast because we get to celebrate water baptisms today. And I just wanna, I wanna share a little bit about what this looks like, what it means, because here's the thing. This is, this is why we do church. It's not about like, making it look pretty and, and coming together and reading a couple of passages of scripture so that we feel better. We do church because Jesus Christ still today changes lives. And we get to celebrate that today. I just want to give you a quick overview and then I want a couple of my friends to, to share what Jesus is doing in their life or, or has done in their life. We, depending on your, your, your background and, and how uh, you grew up, whatever church looked like for you, it may be a little bit different. But here at Weatherstone Church, we do two things. We dedicate babies, but we baptize people when they're old enough to make a decision to follow Jesus. So um, that's, that's what we see in scripture. We know that Jesus, when he was just a few days old, Mary and Joseph took him to the temple to have him dedicated. It actually happened a few times in scripture. But when we see water baptism, it's because people are old enough to say, hey, I want to make the decision. This is my personal decision that Jesus Christ has changed my life and I want to go public with it. It's a symbolization of, of going under the water. It's like being dead to your old self. Everything is washed away and when we come up, it's like we are the new creation in Christ Jesus. And we celebrate that today. And one of the things that we want you to do is we want you to hear some of their stories. Because it's one thing if, it, if it's on a screen or if I read it. It's another thing to realize that these are people that Jesus has changed their life they may not be excited about standing on a stage and talking every weekend. 
but their story is important. And I want you to hear this today. No matter what your story is, it's important. No matter where Jesus is, has found you, where he's brought you from, where you're currently even at, maybe you're still trying to figure out who this Jesus is. Where you're at is important to Jesus. And you need to know that today. We're just a bunch of regular people saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So this is Rick. Got to know Rick because Rick and his wife Erica uh, were constantly tuned into the Weatherstone Facebook page during quarantine, which is fun. I enjoy that. That was, that was great. But Rick... Um, how did, how did we get to this point today? So a little over a year ago um, in July, my life was a train wreck. Um, my marriage was on the verge of divorce. My business was tanking, and I was just ready to give up on life. And I got in my car, and I had made the decision that day that I was, I was done. I was just ready to be done with life. It was too hard, too difficult. And I happened to drive past this church. And a beam of light shined onto this church. It's like one o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon and I pulled into the parking lot and I came inside and asked if I could speak to somebody and Ray Jablonski <laughs> happened to be here that day and God spoke through him and spoke right into my heart yeah. and that was the day that I started to change my life around and yeah. I chose to give my marriage and my life over to Christ and since then, my, my marriage has done a 180 degree turn. Come on. Uh, my business is starting to be extremely successful, yeah. and my life is just so much better than what it was over a year ago. Come on. Rick, are you excited to profess in front of all these people and whoever's online that you're going to live for Jesus for the rest of your life? Without a doubt. Come on, somebody. You go get ready. Thank you, sir. Come on over. How you doing, Natalie? I'm all right. The lights help, right? You can't see anybody. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's just nice we're, we're, to light up here. That was so, quite the story. Right? Every story matters, though. Every yes. story. Well, how did, how did you end up here? Yeah, I think when I was a kid, I always thought God was mad at me or wanted to judge me, and I just, it was just scary to me. And then as a teenager, I walked away from it, and, but God brought some amazing families, some people into my life, and I got to see who he truly was, yeah. how much he loved me, and just seeing the difference in their lives, I just knew something was different, and I knew it was that they, they told me they followed Jesus, and so I made that decision for myself. My life has been so much different since, and I'm just so excited to follow him forever. Oh, come on. <laughs> You have an entire cheering section, but really all you need is Courtney. Like, she's, you excited to just sit in front of all these people, dedicate and say, I'm going to live for Jesus for the rest of my life. I am. Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to have to go do that. <clears throat> all right. Michelle, you ready for this? I am. Come on. Um, so a couple weeks ago, this, is, this was interesting, uh, you were in Florida which I'm slightly jealous about, walking with your aunt and listening to Weatherstone online. So for those of you even watching online, you need to know um, God still works. The Holy Spirit's not confined to a building. Uh, that's not what it's about. It's, about. it's about his presence in your life. And in that moment, we were talking about baptism and you, were, you said something that you wanna do. Um, you're a Christian, you wanna commit your life to the Lord and Savior and you're ready to commit to follow him for the rest of your life. Michelle, we're so excited that we can be a part of this. Now, I wanna pause because I didn't say something before. If you are family members, I said this before, like this is what church is all about. If you want pictures, feel free to walk up to the front, take pictures. This is a celebration. This is not like structure, order. This is, when we get to heaven, it's gonna be a worship service. See, come on up stage. See, this is, let's do this, right? This is family, y'all, this is family. Michelle, we love you. We're so excited about your profession of faith. Uh, it's an honor to be able to baptize you. Go ahead, Jared. Come on. <laughs> You're welcome, whoever is on there watching. This is great. Too much fun. Come on. Rick, we heard your story. 
Man, I'm so proud of you. Just, uh, I think one of the things, you've already told your story, so I don't have to share it, but um, between you and Erica, I know I can't see you right now, but I think, I didn't know you beforehand, but the parents that you guys have been, the influence, even, uh, again, I get to be here and hang out with your kids on Wednesday nights, and I love the way that you have led your family. It's not just about a decision for you, but it's a decision that's impacted your family, which is the way it should be. And I just want to honor you for that as well. I thank you. I'm excited that we get to baptize you today because of your profession of faith. Jared. Come on. Come on, come on. <clears throat> hey, and know this, whatever your story may be, I remember I grew up and I felt like I didn't have a story. Like I grew up in church. And I didn't like have this crazy like sin falling away story, but know this, no matter what your story is for you, it's your story, it's your testimony. Revelation says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the sacrifice that Jesus made, and the word of your testimony. So whatever it may be, God can use you, will work in you, will work through you, and I'm excited about it. Natalie, here we are. Let's do this. It's an honor to be a part of this day. We're excited for you, and we're going to celebrate like crazy when you come up out of the water. Uh, Jerry, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Got people running up. Chris, yours is the only one that I had to open on a second card. Just so you know, it's good. Hey, but that just means that God's done a lot. So again, just to, to share a little bit of your story, and they can hear you too in the mic as well. Fast-paced life. Uh, grew up in church as, as a child. Um, life happened, marriage, three kids. Um, but life took a drastic turn in, in 2016 with the, the death of your son, Brad. And um, I can only imagine the, the grief that happened in that moment. And as you continued to grieve after months of that, uh, there was a friend that uh, introduced you to Christ first and foremost, and then brought you to Weatherstone Church. Diane. Diane. <laughs> um, can I just say this? Like, there's a few people in the in the room right now. Like, there's people that that are like Chris, and it's like, hey, it's time. Like, it's it's to be baptized. And for those of us that have already been through baptism, we get to be Diane's. We get to be Andrew's. Andrew is, is the disciple in the Bible who brought Peter, who's like, hey, I don't even quite know, but you gotta come and see. Every time you see Andrew in scripture, when you look at the, the awesome miracle where Jesus feeds 5,000, how did that little boy end up there? Andrew was like, hey, I got somebody. Like, you just kept bringing people to Jesus. And I think, Diane, you're an incredible example in this story, and you're, you're a part of, of what's, what's happening here. Um, with that, I lost my spot. Uh, instantly you knew that this was about to be church home. At the close of one of the services, you raised your hand to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and now you stand on Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31.8. The Lord will be with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. And Matthew 7.7, 7, ask, and it will be given to you. Um, last four years hasn't been easy, but there's hope in Jesus Christ. I know that I've healed, I know that I've grown, and I'm so thankful for my family, my Weatherstone family. Now I again laugh, have joy and peace, and it's truly be who Jesus who gives us the strength. Chris, it's so awesome to be a part of this day with you, um, that by your profession of faith, we get to be, uh, we, you get to be baptized today. Cheers. God is good. This one, this one's fun. This one's fun. Uh, 
because, hi. hi. Uh, what? It's really bright. I know there's, there's lights up here. London, this is, this is fun because um, I know your profession of faith, uh, but who's, other than uh, staff member, elder, all that stuff, who's this guy next to you? Your grandpa. Your grandpa gets to be a part of this. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I, there's nothing greater than uh, being a part of the journey with, with kids and grandkids. Um, and it's amazing that at this point in your life that you've said that you want to be baptized, you love Jesus, you want to spread his word, you want to live for Jesus your whole life. Um, that's awesome. And we're, we celebrate with you, and we're so excited that we get to be here with you. Uh, and your grandpa's pretty proud of you as well, yeah. just like we are. Jerry, go ahead. Hey, come on. Can you stand with me all across this place? Here's what I know. There's a five people, there were two in the first service, seven total this weekend, that went through the waters of baptism, but we all have reason to celebrate. And how many of you know that we get to believe in an incredible, life-changing Jesus that deserves our praise and our glory? So let's lift our voices. Let's give him the worship and praise he deserves. Sing, I believe. I believe. I believe in God our Father. I believe. Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's sing it one more time. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. One more time. For I believe in the name. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to be here, God. Be part of this celebration of water baptism for these. God, we thank you just as we heard Pastor Brandon say earlier. It's by the words of our testimony, God, that your kingdom advances, that people are drawn to you, God. We thank you for those that shared here this morning. We thank you that we get to be a part of their day. God, your word says that as we go down under, the old man dies and the new man comes to life. We thank you that as we get to be part of that and see that, God, that it feeds and nourishes our soul and our spirit. It encourages us and it edifies us. So we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that we're part of it. We thank you for these individuals today, God. We just pray it all in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated. Yes, let's have another round of applause for these wonderful people. And good morning. Good morning, everyone. I feel like we've had a morning already, but now we're going to say good morning and welcome home. I'm Pastor Michelle. We are so excited to have you here with us at Weatherstone Church. We say welcome home very much on purpose. We don't think it's an accident that you're here with us. Those of you that might be visiting this morning for the first time or here to celebrate a friend or family member that was just water baptized, special welcome to you. We would love just to get a little bit of information from you. So there's a connect card for those of you here in the auditorium. If you're watching online, you will see there's a description in the link. Also, as you leave this morning, if you'd stop at the Welcome Center, we have a gift for you. So don't be afraid to do that. Please stop on out there and get your gift. Uh, we will be celebrating communion, closing out the service. So if you did not grab the elements on your way in, now is a good time to go and get those. Also, those of you watching online, grab some juice uh, and some sort of a cracker or something for communion. 
Pastor Brandon will be up here in just a moment to share the word that God has given him this morning. Before we do that, I'm going to pray for our offering. Just want to thank you for your continued giving, for your faithfulness to give in the tithe and above and beyond that in generosity to kingdom builders. We don't pass offering buckets here. Uh, there is a box as you leave in the back. Otherwise, there is a link you can give online or you can text to give. So let's just pray quickly. Father, thank you again for your goodness. Thank you that we recognize that everything that we have comes from your goodness and that we have an opportunity to worship you by giving back to you, God. We thank you for that opportunity. We pray that you give us continued wisdom as to how we use it to advance your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Good stuff. <clears throat> Come on. How you doing today? It's good. Hey, this is what church should be like. Like, just... Just celebrate, and, and God is good. God is good. This, this is why we do this. Uh, I, I believe that God is still in the business of changing lives, and I'm so thankful um, that we get to be a part of it. We get to celebrate with each and every one of, of the people that uh, were faithful with baptism today. We had seven of them this weekend, uh, but not just that. I believe each and every one of us have a story, and that's, that's amazing. Before we dive into today, uh, which again, as Pastor Michelle just mentioned, it is Communion Sunday, so if you don't have those elements, feel free to grab those, even if you're in the room and, and needed to go grab some now. You totally can. It's fine. Um, I'm cool with that. And uh, so we will do that. Before we do that, we have a couple of orders of business that we have to do first. Business, that may sound so official. We have a couple of orders of fun, is what it is. We're going to have some orders of fun uh, that we get to do. Uh, first and foremost, this week on uh, November 11th is Veterans Day. And normally we do it on the weekend as close as possible to Veterans Day. Uh, and when it lands on a Wednesday in the middle of the week, uh, we get out in front and we honor early. And um, so I want to do this. If you, are, if you have served or are serving right now in any of the branches of military uh, for our country, would you please stand and remain standing so that we can honor you today? Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> I want to ask you to stay standing for just a moment uh, because there's something else that I want to do. I just felt impressed to do this last night as I was preparing. Uh, if you are a spouse or a parent of someone who uh, has served or is serving, would you stand as well right now at this moment, please? Because um, we want to honor you as well. Uh, here's what I... Go ahead. Go ahead. Here's what I know. Um, I know that those of you that, that stood first uh, and, and served and sacrificed, uh, it's, it's a big sacrifice. But I also know for your family, for your spouses, for, for parents here, um, there's, there's a big weight in that as well. And in this moment, we want to honor both of you. Um, I thank you that I get to stand here every weekend and present the gospel without fear because of people like you. Um, we have incredible freedom of speech and freedom of religion because of people like you. Scripture even says that the, the greatest love is this, that someone would lay down their life for a brother. Some translations say a friend. And yet for people that you will never meet, you were willing uh, to sacrifice and serve. And you deserve honor for that. And we thank you so much uh, for, for that sacrifice, for what you have done. And so I just want to pray a prayer of blessing. I, I ask that you pray with me. Uh, as we honor you today. God, I thank you so much for these incredible men and women um, who selflessly sacrificed. Lord God, that they um, were willing to serve, to put some things on hold here, to ensure freedoms that our country um, so often doesn't even think about. God, the fact that we don't have to think about it is because of incredible women and men like this. So God, today we honor them before you, but we also lift up their arms. We strengthen them. Lord God, I pray right now, even for, for so many things that, that we hear about with, with PTSD and, and things that happen, Lord God, I pray just a hedge of protection around each and every one of them. Lord God, renew their mind as your word says. Lord, allow them to understand, uh, understand and see your strength in their lives. And God, help them to understand that there's so many of us that stand alongside them today 
and honor them, not just today, but this entire week and throughout the entire year. We realize that the freedom that we have spiritually isn't free, and the freedom that we have as a country wasn't free. And I thank you so much for these people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. We honor you today. Thank you so much uh, for your service. The second order of fun uh, that we had is last week I stood here and I said, hey, we're going to pray for the election, and then we're going to pray this week, no matter who it is, for the president-elect. And honestly, I thought that was a surefire thing. It's like, that would make complete sense. It would be cut and dry. Uh, and then I got 2020. That's become a verb now. Anytime like, the rug gets pulled out and you get sideswiped, you just got 2020. That's what it is. Um, so I understand, first and foremost, I want to make this clear, I understand um, that the election itself is not over, all right? We, we, are, we are about to walk through a season of, of trying to figure it out and trying to let the justice system do what the justice system does. So please understand me when I say this today. Today, we are going to pray. Um, we are going to pray uh, for four people. We're going to pray for current sitting president, President Donald Trump. We're going to pray for what may right now be President-elect Joe Biden. We're going to pray for Mike Pence, and we're going to pray for Camilla Harris. But here's the thing. Hold on. I need you to hear my heart, guys. I'm not called to be a judge. I'm so thankful for men and women, whether it be state level, whether it be Supreme Court level. I know this as a Christ follower, not even as a pastor, that I'm called to pray. That's my job. We prayed last week. On Tuesday, I cast my vote. I did what I was supposed to do. And from then on out, we as the church pray. And it does not matter if you like or agree with. Church, when Paul wrote the letter that said, pray for your leaders, he was in Roman prison. He was in, 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 in a place where not just the, the government leaders, but the religious leaders wanted him dead. And instead of saying, hey, Fight for earthly like justice. Fight for my life. He said, no, 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 pray for him. Because more importantly than winning a battle in this world or even winning an election is winning people to Jesus because that's why we're here. There's a moment on a Friday where it looked like Jesus lost an election. But what we didn't understand as humans so often was he wasn't in it to win a day. He said, I'm willing to risk it all so that none should perish eternally. That's what we pray for today. I do not care what side of the aisle you're on. Not even a little bit. If you want to have that conversation, I've said before from this platform, I really enjoy conversations about politics. If you want to have that on an individual level, I would love to have a, an honest conversation with you. But from this moment, as we gather to honor Jesus Christ as a church, our actions, our words, and our prayers will honor him. It was twice in scripture that Jesus showed up and flipped everything over and inside of a church. And it was in a moment where he said, no, 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 this place is a house of prayer. Don't ever get that twisted. So today we will pray, and we will pray for every elected official, whether or not we voted for them or not, because they are in authority. I want you to bow your heads with me, and I want you to pray with me today, and hear me, if it's hard for you to pray this prayer, maybe that means that God is working on your life. Because our prayer, our forgiveness, when we pray for people it says more about our heart posture than theirs. So God, today, 
please see your church. As people of prayer, God, please today bless every person in an elected position. Lord God, we pray right now for President Donald Trump. We pray for Vice President Mike Pence. We pray wisdom over their lives. I thank you that your word says that if we lack it, Lord God, we ask for it. And the God who gives abundantly will give us wisdom. I pray wisdom over their lives. And God, today I pray for Joe Biden. I pray for Camilla Harris. God, I pray that, that you would surround them with godly people. Lord God, it says even in our own lives, all throughout Proverbs, that, that we need to surround ourselves with people of wisdom. Lord God, I pray those people, God-fearing people, into their lives. Lord, the ones that are already there, I pray that you just lift up their voice, lift up, even expand their territory, lift up their credibility. God, yes, so that we can experience blessings as a nation. But God, more so than that, so that your kingdom can be built. Heaven and earth will pass away. Our nation will pass away. But God, we today, by prayers, invest in the kingdom of God. I pray right now for every elected official. I pray that you build them up. I pray that you give them strength. I pray that you give them courage. I pray that you give them wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. 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 I need to wash these pants. That was humor. I was trying to help myself out, and you guys didn't even laugh. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> guys, we're here to build the kingdom of God. It's actually what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about communion. It's communion Sunday. Um, but I want to take a moment and, and, and talk about what it really means. Because I think sometimes we miss the true meaning of it when we, when we have single-serving communion. Like, I, I know we've done it forever. I've grown up in the church, and it's like uh, you, you have, a, even, even when we would pass it out, it's like a cracker and, and a, a small cup of juice. Or if you had a, a, a different traditional religious background, it was like it, was a, it, was, it would be just a single serving that someone would give to you, and then you'd head back to your seat. It's not exactly the way that Jesus would have, would have done it on the Last Supper. And I think as we dive into what Jesus would have done in that day, we learn this incredible lesson of what it truly meant. I love how Jesus took uh, moments in that time and festivals even in, in, in that uh, day and age, and he used them to teach about who he really was. And I know this is a part of our, our series, and our series is called Kingdom Builders because we believe that. Kingdom Builders is not just an offering that we give to, but it literally, it's who we are. We are people who every day, our, our, our life is to build the kingdom of God. Yes, that means through our finances at times. It means supporting missionaries and, and, and trying to, to, to be able to further what they're doing uh, on the field in places that we aren't. But it also means being that here in this place. And I know next week, we've talked about this the last few weeks, where next week we're going to have what we call a miracle offering. And I encourage you just to pray about what God would have you to give. We've talked about it for the last few weeks because, uh, please hear me, I don't want you to feel pressured. I'm not trying to spring anything on you, but I believe that as we pray and prepare, we can do uh, what it talks about in 1 Corinthians 7, that we decide in our heart what we should give. That way, with joyful hearts, we get to give and invest in the kingdom of God. And we believe that it's not just a miracle, meaning like God's going to take a few bucks in a bucket and all of a sudden there'll be a billion when it comes back out. But we believe that in that moment, we get to, through our resources, be the miracle for someone who's praying for somebody to recognize them, for somebody to show up, for somebody to show them the hope that they don't have. They don't even know the name that's associated with it. But we, through this offering, get to support missionaries and, and uh, fund organizations that show up and say, hey, not only can I give you hope, but I can tell you who it is. His name is Jesus Christ. And I believe that next week, we get to be a miracle for people all around the world, and I ask you to pray about being a part of that next week. <clears throat> this weekend is fun because we get to celebrate both baptism and communion. 
<laughs> it's like we get to like this is this is this is church, guys. This is this is what we get to do. We get to come together and we get to celebrate uh, church lives changed, but we get to talk about why lives are changed, which we know in communion. And the thing about communion, well, it's amazing, is um, the <clears throat> I still have a fly on. See, it's still down there. Get out. What are you? See, he was done with Mike Pence, and now you, he's here, guys. <clears throat> he's back. Needs a little Jesus. No, political jokes. I'm going to keep them coming because I need to, to make sure. So <clears throat> there's all these Jewish Jewish festivals, and honestly, it's incredible when you get into the Jewish festivals and you get into what Jesus was was a part of and and the culture that was there. There was so much to learn. Like, there was no festival in this day and age that was just like, I don't know, like, let's get off work, let's do some things together. Like, they all had specific foods, they all had specific um, things that would happen that would help remind them of who God was. Like, like I think the, the closest thing, maybe I was trying to figure out, like, what do we, is, is there like a food, and, and Thanksgiving's coming up, and Thanksgiving is like turkey, like you have to have turkey. But I feel like we've even started to shift away from turkey, where it's like, oh, if you don't like turkey, you can do chicken. If you don't want to do chicken, uh, you can do duck. If you want to just, if you're really bad at making decisions, you can do turducken. Has anyone done a turducken? We did a couple, see, my family's raising their hands. We did a couple, it's awesome, guys. It's literally a duck stuffed in a chicken, stuffed in a turkey. Like literally looking at it on the plate, you get the meat sweats. It's amazing. It's awesome. <clears throat> but what the Jewish festivals were all about is, is everything had meaning. And, and the Passover was this incredible meal that was there that was like two plus hours long. And, and everyone would gather around, family members would gather around, and they would, they would retell the story of the Exodus. And there was multiple cups of, of wine. I know we talk about taking one cup, but there were multiple cups that would have been on the table. And they would talk about different moments throughout the, the, um, the history of the Israelite nation. And there was... Uh, a, a time where they would literally eat uh, um, horseradish, the root, like not the sauce that's really mild and mixed with a whole bunch of things, like literally the, the bitterness of horseradish, they would eat it, and then they would teach their kids, like this is the bitterness of sin. When we entered into it, when it entered into our lives, they would take, um, they would take herbs, bitter herbs, and they would dunk it in salt water, and it would represent when they would, they would dunk the hyssop on, into the blood of the lamb and cover their doorposts the, to um, avoid the last plague in the exodus that was there. And what they would do is they would dunk it in salt water and then they would eat it. And the salt water would remind them of even the tears of, of the, the time in their slavery. And there was, there was all this meaning. It was incredible. Like it's, the smells and everything that was there was just was, was amazing. So what we find with, with the Last Supper, though, is Jesus... Starts to, starts to have this meal with his disciples. And he's sitting there and he's reclined at this table. It would have been this big U-shaped table and they probably would have been laying down. Like it wouldn't have been sitting up on chairs. They would have been kind of laying down and you would eat with your right hand and everyone would be reaching into the table that was there. And, and, and he, would be, he would be sharing this story. And there's different things that you say as you go through this. And, and um, there's, there's Hebrew songs that they're saying. It's a beautiful service, beautiful, beautiful dinner together to remind them of God rescuing them, setting them up as a nation, choosing them as the nation of Israel. And as Jesus is doing this, we're going to pick up in Matthew chapter 26 today, if you have your Bibles, starting in verse 26. He takes this, he takes this turn. It's all of a sudden not in Jewish custom. It's interesting, again, when we look through this, Matthew is writing to Jewish people. So when all he would have had to say is he went and they started to celebrate the Passover dinner, and they would have been like, oh, we know what's happening here. But the reason he references Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, is at this point, Jesus all of a sudden throws a curveball. He deviates from what was normally the, the, the um, motion that would have happened there. And it says in, in verse 26, it says, while they were still eating, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to their disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the, some translations say, new covenant, of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the, giveness, for the forgiveness of sins. So all of a sudden, like in, in, 
in the Passover, first of all, this would be unleavened bread. All right, so it would have been flatter. It wouldn't have had yeast in it. Yeast in the Old Testament, uh, there's, there's a lot of teachings on how yeast a lot of times represents sin. How you, once it gets worked into the dough, you can't get it back out. So it's, it's worked in like sin works its way through. So they would get all the yeast out that was there. Um, but also what it does is, is in the Exodus story, we realize that after the last plague, Pharaoh was like, leave, just go. Like, just get out of here quick. So they had to grab what they had and then take off. So they didn't have time to let yeast rise. So that's part of the reason there's unleavened bread there is because it was, that's what they took with them when they went because they, they didn't have time to let bread rise. So, so, but this, <clears throat> this is actually the bread that they use um, for Shabbat and it's tastier and somebody's going to have to eat it afterwards. So that's what I went with um, <clears throat> for me. Uh, so he would have he taken the bread, right? So he takes the bread and he breaks it. And the bread itself, the unleavened bread that was there, it, it didn't actually, like, they knew that it was there as unleavened bread, but there was never a, a part of the service ceremony dinner that would have involved bread. So now all of a sudden, Matthew's like, this is where Jesus started to deviate from the, the culture. And he said, actually, I got something new for you. This is, this is my body. It's broken for you. And every time you come together, do this in remembrance of me. And you can imagine, again, the disciples are like, wait a second, um, you're, about, you're the Messiah. Like, you're going to be the king. So why would your body be broken? Like, this doesn't make sense. You are about to sit on a throne in Jerusalem and rule this whole region again. Like, what are you talking about? And then he goes to the cup. Now, the cup, there's a few different cups that would have taken place. The last cup in the Passover would have been the cup which represents the blood of the lamb. That, that when put over the doorpost caused the death angel to pass over their house. So they would have represented the, the salvation that was there that was going to happen. He said, instead, this, is, this represents my blood. Not the blood of an animal, but, but my blood. And it's not the blood of a singular nation or that, that will rescue a singular nation, but it's actually there to rescue many. And again, this again would have been a deviation of, of what was there because everything about this ceremony was how God rescued Israel. And it was all about like the Jewish people. And it was, if, if you take part in this ceremony, it's because you're, you're in, you're chosen, you're part of the Jewish people, you are an Israelite, like God rescued you. And now Jesus is saying, no, 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 it's not just for you, it's for many, it's for all, it's for everybody. What's amazing is this, is in this, he then said, the new covenant. Now, what's happening here is Jesus is starting to teach them that the old covenant actually came with rules and restrictions and then consequences. That's what happened in, in the old covenant. It was behavior modification. It was, if you do this, then here's the punishment. And it was there to do behavior modification. But the new covenant actually is a heart change. And it's not just like, hey, here's all the rules. It's saying, no, no, no. Instead of giving you a whole bunch of rules so that it's rigid and hard, instead, I'm going to give you a heart of flesh that's soft. And instead of having to, to do all these ceremonial cleansings and then enter into the Holy of Holies to experience the presence of God, instead, with the new covenant, I'm actually going to take my spirit and I'm going to place it inside of each and every one of you. And instead of having these laws that so often they would have to carry around their necks and they, had, they would put them in a little box like with all of the laws that were there uh, so that they could remember them and carry them around, but it was this burden that they had to carry every day. He said, no, 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 instead of that, I'm going to take my law and I'm going to write it on your heart so that it's just within you, that it comes out of you through my, through my spirit. You see, the Passover, the first one in Exodus, created a nation, created the Israelites, it took them as slaves and said, no, 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 you're going to be free people in a promised land, and you're going to become a nation. And the new Passover with Jesus, the new covenant, creates a people again. But it's not just a nation that flies under a flag, but instead it's people united under the person and the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus Christ. And that doesn't, doesn't matter where you live or what you look like or, or what your background may be. It's everybody who, who receives communion, that receives Jesus and his sacrifice into their life gets to partake and be a part of this new people. That we are, that we are Christians, that we, that we come together. Because it's not just for them, but again, he said, for many. 
It's for many. And I think one of the things that we, that we miss every now and then when we do signal servant communion is we forget that it's not just for us. But there's more. If you've ever seen a Jewish festival, like, there's food. Like, they're not lacking, right? There's more. And that's the reason they say, you know what, bring friends, bring family. Like, there's, there's the, the, the feast is big enough. The sacrifice is big enough. And we see that this isn't just a one-time moment because at the creation of the church, we find that in Acts chapter 2. If you want to jump ahead in your Bibles to, to Acts chapter 2, we get to a point um, at the end of Acts chapter 2, we know that Jesus has ascended to heaven and he says, wait here in Jerusalem and I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. And that shows up in Acts chapter 2 like a mighty wind uh, and, and they're filled with the Spirit and people down on the streets are like, what is wrong with these people, <laughs> right? And Peter steps to the window and he says, hold on, let me explain to you what this is. And Acts chapter 2 is actually this amazing gospel presentation that Peter gives to the people of, of Jerusalem that are all there for the Passover feast. And right after that, it says that 3,000 people were added to their number. Pretty good church plant, let me just say that. Like, that was a really good first day, all right? So with that, then it talks about what they look like. And at the end of Acts chapter 2, picking up in verse 44, it says, All the believers were together. They had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts, and they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So here's what they did, the early church. Their structure was they worshiped together like this. Like there was this corporate worship where they would come together and be like, hey, this is awesome. Like-minded people, we're going to come together and we're going to worship. But you know what else they did on a daily basis? They met together. They did life together. And when they did life together, they actually broke bread. They celebrated communion. Because it wasn't just a one-time moment where Jesus did this. It was a constant reminder. How many of you know we all need constant reminders? Like there's moments where, where even on Sundays, you can be in an incredible service and hear, feel the presence of God and then you leave and especially if you have children that need to nap in the afternoon, like there's a moment that you're like, where are you, God? Like, right? We need constant reminders. And that's part of the reason that we here, we talked about it a lot last week, that we talk about doing life together. Not just like, hey, like we think it's a fun thing to do, but biblically that's what we see the church doing. They come together, they, they break bread in their homes, they, they celebrate with glad and sincere hearts, they with thanksgiving say, hey, do you remember the sacrifice that Jesus made? Do you remember what he taught us about communion? Do you remember what he taught us that we're not just here for fun, we're here because his body was broken for us, his blood was shed so that we can experience this freedom, so that we can, we can meet together. And they continued to do this because we need reminders. This is actually one of the reasons that, that we pray over meals. You ever thought about that? Why do, we, why do we pray over meals? It's because the early church on a daily basis when they would come together, they would pray over meals. Not just to be like, God, thanks for food. But it's when we start to get hungry, we realize that we can't live on bread alone. That Jesus is the bread of life. That when we get thirsty, it's not just there to like wash down food. It's there because we understand that, his, that, that we're going to get thirsty again with this, but, but he is living water. And every time we come together, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made. And we know that it continues to get passed on through the years. As a matter of fact, Paul then writes to the Corinthians in his letter to the first, first Corinthians chapter 11, he talks about communion. Understand this, this letter shows up about 20 years after the Lord's Supper. So we know it wasn't just like, hey, here's this one-time moment where Jesus taught us and now it's cool, like we'll do this every now and then as a church. Again, part of the constant reminder, just so you know, we do communion here as a church. Um, sometimes we do it for, for special services and we'll do it just because we're like, hey, we need to do it again. We will do it every second weekend of the month, or, or second weekend of the month. Um, a lot of times we did it on the first weekend, and then we realized that, that in America, like, every holiday is on the first weekend of the month. Like, when you think about it, it's, you have the 4th of July, you have Labor Day and Memorial Day, and I was like, wait, people can't, like, not I, this happened before I got here. The church was like, we can't have people missing communion all the time. Like, let's move it a week, um, and here we are, because we need constant reminders. In the same way, the church in Corinth in chapter 11, 
Paul says this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. There's a few things that happens a lot in all three of these. Um, The first thing is thanksgiving. Jesus says, hey, with thanksgiving. Paul repeats it and says, hey, with thanksgiving. The early church met together with glad and sincere hearts. They broke bread. They gave thanks. That was there. If you grew up and and heard this called the Eucharist, really it's the Greek word that that just means giving thanks is, is what it means. It's there for thankfulness. So when we come together with thanksgiving, we remember who Jesus was and the sacrifice that he made. But then you move into the question of, all right, what are we thankful for? I think first and foremost, as much as we talk about this isn't just single serving, I think we have to start at an individual level. I know this, I'm thankful that Jesus saved me. Know this, Jesus loves you individually. He knows your story and he still loves you. There's nothing that you can do that could ever separate you from his love. Doesn't matter if you've been walking with him for a while or if you're new and trying to figure this whole thing out and and maybe you've never even given your life to Jesus. You need to know this. Jesus loves you. So when we pause and when we take communion, we realize and we're thankful, God, thank you for, for loving me. And then as we start to expand from that, we realize that Jesus loves us. Do you know what? Jesus loves the church. He loves this messy family that we are. That actually, we're, we're called his bride in scripture. He loves us. But I think the part that sometimes we forget when we take single serving communion here was the amount of bread that would have been there. And it would have been a constant reminder for those at that supper that Jesus also loves them. That there are more people that need to experience the love of Jesus and understand that his body was broken for them, that his blood was shed for them. And sometimes when we take a little bit and we consume it all ourselves, we forget that there's enough for the entire world. Know this, church. When we come together and when we celebrate communion, I'm so thankful that I get to participate. But it also should be a reminder for me that there are people in places in our world that don't have this opportunity right now because they've never heard the name of Jesus Christ or they've never gotten a real gospel presentation from somebody of the love that Jesus has for them. And while I take communion, yes, I'm thankful and I celebrate what Jesus has done for me and I love the freedoms that I have. I love that I get to worship and feel the presence of God. I also understand in that moment that there are people that Jesus died for that it's my job to be on commission or on mission with him to make sure they understand the sacrifice of Jesus. So I want to do this before we even take communion together today. I want to ask you just to bow your heads and close your eyes. Again, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what your week was like last week or your life was like up to this point. But if you've come in here today and you know that you're not living for Jesus, that maybe your your life doesn't have the hope that I believe Jesus will bring. Here's what I know. The book of Romans says pretty simply that if you believe with your heart, And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you will be saved. That your story can be the same as Rick's, as Natalie's, as Chris. That no matter where you've been or what you've gone through, that today can be your day. And with nobody looking around, I'll look around just so that I can see you. If today you want to say, God, I want to give my life to you. I want to have the hope that you can bring. 
I want to I want to receive the gift of salvation that you paid the price for. Even though I don't deserve it, God, I believe that you are the son of God, that you gave up your life for me so that I could have freedom. Today, if that's you and you want to give your life to Jesus with nobody looking around, I just want to ask you to slip up your hand so that I can see it and I want to pray with you today because I believe God is doing something amazing in this place. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. I see you. Scan back one more time. I'm starting on my right, your left. I just don't want to miss hands. I believe this is a big moment. I see you. Glad I came back. Know this, that I believe that today that Jesus is doing something in our midst. Thank you. I see you. And he wants you to be a part of it. It's a free gift. So today, that reference in Romans says, if you believe with your heart, I believe that you've done that by raising your hand. Then it says, if you confess with your mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead you in a prayer real quick. But know this, when Pastor Michelle stood up here and said, we want to say welcome home, we believe your family, we truly do believe that. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to say a few words, and then everybody in the room is going to repeat after me. Because here, your family, nobody prays alone. But know this, if you raised your hand, or even if you didn't, but you know that you need to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life today, by repeating these words, you can ask Jesus into your life. Would you repeat after me? Dear Jesus, I know that I've sinned. I know that I've fallen short. But today I believe that you died on a cross for my sins. Today I receive you. Come into my life. I promise to follow you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. God, I thank you so much for the people that raised their hand. I thank you so much for what you are doing in this place. God, I know that you are at work. And God, we give you praise and we give you glory that you are the only one that can save. We know it's only because of you and by your blood. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, can we give God some praise right now? Come on. God is still at work. God is still changing lives. And with that, we then get to celebrate communion. So I'm going to ask you to grab the elements if you have them, even if you're at home. Take a chunk of this one. That's fun. Let's go with that one. And just like Jesus at that last supper he took the bread you can go ahead and take the bread out of that and he broke it and he said this is my body that will be broken for you at this moment he then deviated from what was culture and was teaching us who he really was the messiah he said when you come together do this understanding and remembering the sacrifice that i made church understand the prophecy about this was this it says that he would be wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, but yet by his stripes, we would be healed. So we don't just come together remembering what he did. We come together in thanksgiving, understanding the victory that he won. So today in thanksgiving, let's take the bread together. Then he took the cup. And he said, unlike the blood of a lamb that saved a nation for a year or took them out of slavery in Egypt, if you know the story of the Old Testament, they ended up back in slavery in Babylon. It didn't stick. But he said, this blood, my blood, equals freedom. There's no way that we can go back into slavery because of the blood of Jesus that we allow this to, to, to wash over our lives so that we can be made clean, be made pure, so that we can be in the presence of the Almighty God. It's because of this that we are, we are promised eternal life. He said, because of this sacrifice, because of this blood, whenever you come together to take communion, do this in thanksgiving. 
Guys, the presence of God that we can feel even in this place right now is because of the sacrifice of Jesus. And when we do this, we recognize and remember it's his death that has given us the freedom today. So in thanksgiving, let's take the cup together. Amen, amen. Will you stand with me all across this place? There's one more verse I want to read to you as we close. I know we normally close with worship, and then we're going to continue to do that, but, but here's why. When we do communion, it leads to worship. Because there's a freedom that we have because of the, the sacrifice of Jesus. And because of that, even in Matthew chapter 26, the, the, the verses we just read, he said communion. In verse 30, when we jump down to it, it says, when they were done, they had sung a hymn, and then they went out to the Mount of Olives. Our response should be worship. So today, we all get to respond for the communion, for the sacrifice, knowing he saved me, he saved us. There's enough to save the world, and because of that, we give him the praise he deserves. Come on, let's worship together as we close. stands between us only because of what Jesus did for us. Come on. So let's say no other name but Jesus. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. Come on, church. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in this space between all the things I see. And it's reckoning. And I know I will, I will never, never be alone. I will never, 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 never be alone. I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. Should I? Good. 
Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness, for your vast love for us that we will never truly understand, God. In this year, in this month, in this week, in seasons, there are times when we feel like there's a darkness, but you sent your son Jesus to be the light in that darkness, God. For that those of us here that know Jesus and have him in our heart, there is no darkness. You are the light in the darkness, we have you to be the light so that we can then go and be the light. We thank you this morning for that reminder. I know there's times when I myself am in here and I look at the cross and it's lit. And it reminds me that we are to go and be light. And your promise to us is that you are a God of abundance and a God of more than enough. And you desire to work through us for the next one. And that we have that opportunity this morning, church. So I just thank you for every person that's in here, that you would ignite that fire, that we would be drawn closer to you, that when we see light, we would know that we know that we know that not only do we have light in the darkness, but we are called to be light in the darkness for those that do not know you. And we pray this in the beautiful name of Jesus. And they said, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Yes. What a beautiful morning. You can clap again for all those water baptism candidates. It's been a good day here. Thank you for being with us. If you are one that invited Jesus into your heart and made a decision for him this morning, we've got something for you. Don't leave without it. We knew you'd be here today. We have things for you. We want to walk together with you through this. The rest of you go. Be the church. Have a wonderful week. We look forward to seeing you next week when it will be Miracle Offering. Have a great day.